Hello, my name is David Preston. I'm the Chief Executive of the National Association of British Market Authorities, often known as NABMA, and I'm pleased to record this online webinar on understanding markets for the High Street Task Force. So a little about me to start with. Um, I became Chief Executive in 2019 and succeeded Graham Wilson, who had been the highly respected um, Chief Executive of NABMA over many years and really made it the organization that it is today. I have a career in local government. Um, I was town clerk in Oswestry in Shropshire for over 30 years. And I have been president of the Society of Local Council Clerks and also president of the Institute of Market Officers. Um, although that was some time ago, markets really have been enshrined in my career. Um, I started out on a market when I was 15 years old as a Saturday lad. Um, it was a market stall in Mid Wales. And that really heightened to me the importance of markets and what they mean in local communities. So the aim of this session really is to introduce markets um, to review markets, to look at their offer, um, particularly in terms of the town centre and the decline that we're seeing at the moment in town centres, but also the, the community offer and perhaps what people don't realise and how much markets are offering communities at the present time. I'd also like to look then at our national retail market survey that NABMA undertook in 2022. And then as a result of that survey, to look at our national campaign called Markets First, which we launched in April 23 and is going to run for the next two years. Um, that campaign is very important. It's live now. Um, we really want endorsement from organisations and support for that campaign, recognising the important role that markets have going forward. <coughs> So a little bit about my organization, NABMA. It's been around now over 100 years supporting markets. It started out in Nottingham and Derby um, when they challenged the government, um, which in those days could actually increase market charges. We have now a broad church of some 300 members. And those aren't just local authorities, they're business improvement districts, CICs, markets in the private sector. But more importantly, the growth of markets in our membership is in parish and town councils. And I think this can be pointed out to uh, legislation such as localism and levelling up, where principal authorities are passing and devolving services now down to the most local level. And we deliver a very wide range of member services. We provide many events, conferences, we provide legal advice, guidance, we provide template documents. Um, so a really full plethora of services for our members. And our four pillars really of membership are around our voice um, and how we use that with government, the range of services that I've said that we provide that includes mentoring, the advocacy role that NABMA takes on on behalf of its members. And then very importantly, how we bring our members together, either physically on or online, um, in terms of networking and discussing problems and issues that we have. And Basecamp is one of our main services where over 350 market professionals have the opportunity to chat on a day-to-day -day basis about issues and problems facing the industry, and in particular, their role in markets. So in introducing markets, um, I think this statement's very important, that markets are an important part of the history of towns and cities in the UK, important sites of commerce and represent the hearts of our communities. And I think markets now are much, much more than that, particularly as since 2018, we've experienced COVID. And we can just simply look at, at, at towns like Bury. Um, we can look at how markets have evolved. And we look at things like market charters, some of which have been around nearly a thousand years. And we look at the investment now that many markets are trying to make. And we particularly look at two iconic markets established in recent months. And those are at Warrington and Chester, which have given a real focus to markets, their role in the community and their offer, particularly in terms of food. But we're also, becoming more and more aware of how markets support their communities and are really starting to fill the gaps as we see public services diminished. So research that we've been doing recently with the Department of Leveling Up have shown how a number of NHS services are being delivered from the market. 
with all the problems of banks, particularly in rural market towns, and these sort of facilities now are appearing. And also libraries, we've seen the, the economic impact on libraries um, and other public services, and how some of these now are starting to appear as a focus of markets. We're also seeing cooking schools, the Jamie Oliver cooking schools. Uh, we've also seen cooking schools down at Billingsgate. And then markets very much about communication and information. I know many markets now, they actually organize as part of their portfolio, charter markets, repair markets, gardening markets, and very importantly now, youth and teenage markets. And markets were also seen in terms of social networking, in terms of education and community safety. Recent research we've done has seen that a number of community safety teams are located in their market, in the heart of their community. And very much markets provide education. So many organizations come now into the market to provide information about the services and the support that they can provide. And I think without doubt, as well as supporting communities, particularly coming out of COVID, it's obvious how much markets have supported tourism, hospitality and the leisure sectors. And I think that's been one of the great frustrations for markets. Whereas during COVID, many market operators received little or no support from government. And nearly a third of traders, we understand, um, have actually uh, lost their businesses since COVID, where they actually received no support from um, government or local authorities due to a number of factors. <coughs> the community value of markets. Um, very important. It's highlighted by recent Leeds University research, providing affordable quality produce and fresh and healthy food. And also, I think in there is obviously the cash element where a number of people aren't able to use cards. So cash is king. It's very important to them. Obviously, about the social, the cultural interaction. And I remember that from my own experiences as a 15 year old whereby in a rural market town in mid Wales, um, an elderly lady used to come to the market about 8.30 every Saturday morning. She wanted very little in terms of produce, but what she wanted was company. We were probably on the stall, the only people that that person spoke to during the week, and we became her family. They're very inclusive, generally accessible places to all. And I think the most important, particularly when we look at our survey later in this presentation, is that they provide low cost, and they provide low entry trading opportunities. And with so many, so much employment displaced during COVID, then that is very, very important. And these low entry businesses starting out on markets can help fill the gaps on the high street in the months and years to come. And obviously markets provide a big anchor role in town centres. I've mentioned Bury. if we look at the new market at Chester, um, Warrington again, and it's so important how these markets are filling that role in town centres. And of course, in terms of low income families, then markets are very important and never was that more so evident than during COVID, particularly with the reluctance or the inability to, to go into supermarkets. <coughs> we move on to our survey in 2022. And NADMA undertook this on the basis of coming out of COVID. Our last survey was in 2018, but also the economic crisis and the impact it was having upon the high streets and markets. And whilst there were some good headlines, there were also some very worrying headlines. Stall occupancy is down um, from 77%. The number of traders is falling dramatically. And particularly what is a big concern to us is that only 8% of traders are actually under 40 years of age. 84% of markets are now operated or controlled by local authorities, and the involvement of the private sector is becoming less. And with the financial crisis and difficulties in funding for local services being faced by local authorities, then as markets are not a mandatory service, then we have to assume that some of them in years and months to come could be at risk. It's also concerning that only 40% of markets have an annual financial surplus, and that's a big, big worry to us. And only 13% are actually measuring footfall at the moment, which again is surprising and a concern. So having established the survey, looked at the results, analyzed them, then obviously we have major concerns. And the action plan is um, a national campaign, Markets First, 
It's endorsed by the National Market Traders Federation. So this is an industry campaign. And it's about setting a vision for the UK markets going forward. It's about a discussion, embracing, involving as many people as possible. We've set five priorities and the first, the most important, is to attract but also to retain the existing traders that we have on markets. Markets offer an amazing opportunity to entrepreneurs and startup businesses. <coughs> Excuse me. The next one is addressing the economic challenges that markets face within their communities, but also demonstrating their wider value. And as I mentioned in previous slides, we're already doing that, looking at the number of community and public service facilities that are being delivered out of markets. And then more in-house are two factors around professionalizing market management and improving relationship with market traders. Achievements to date in just a few months have been considerable. We have support from the All Party Parliamentary Markets Group, from the High Sector, um, from the High Street Sector Leaders Group, and importantly from the World Union of Wholesale Markets. We've produced a national template on market charges to assist our members, and in the weeks to come, we're working now with the LGA on an amendment to the, the non-domestic rating bill, whereby markets, particularly local authority markets, don't have a level playing field with other high street players and with private market operators. Other achievements to date were a very, very successful Love Your Local Market campaign held in May 2023. That saw a number of markets feature on TV, lots of local radio coverage, 400 mark 450 markets involved. And with a real emphasis at that time, about welcome to markets to try and encourage um, new market trading, teenage markets, and generally about how markets are important to the health of communities. We're providing good practice publications now on various topics, and one of them is an elected member's guide to markets, demonstrating to elected members, portfolio holders, how important markets are and how they must be part of local strategies and policies. We're establishing um, a performance network group. We've been working very closely with APSI and we'll be launching the group in, at our conference later on in the year. And very importantly for us, an NABMA education board has been set up. With this, we're looking at the link between market management and place management. We're reviewing our diploma in markets administration and looking at all the professional development opportunities that we provide and what we can start to provide going forward in the future as markets become more important in town and city centre regeneration. We're also working very closely now with government and we're very grateful to Simon Baines MP who has assisted us in reforming the All Party Parliamentary Markets Group. This is a vitally important conduit for NABMA, for the National Market Traders Federation and for our industry into Westminster and into government. A few weeks ago, we held a roundtable meeting with the Leveling Up Minister, and we were greatly encouraged by the response we received from the Minister and also the interest in our Markets um, First campaign. We've been very pleased to work very closely with some new civil servants around levelling up. And as a result of that, our government retail forum is to be refreshed with more opportunities to discuss the issues of the day. And then earlier on in the year, um, we were delighted that Simon Baines MP promoted a 10 minute bill that asked the government to revisit its support for markets and market trading. Um, to have 10 minutes coverage on specifically markets on the floor of the House of Commons was a great boost to us. So the market offering summary, I've covered a lot of ground, but I believe that markets are very much a community provider and they can be a significant community partner as well. They're a culture creator, they bring people together I think if you look at issues now around environment and schools, this is very important. And then I've mentioned about being a place shaper and a foundation for regeneration. An anchor, if you like, and probably no better example, although very iconic, is somewhere like Borough Market down in London. And then very importantly, markets are a builder of community resilience. We've seen this through COVID. Um, we've seen the help, the support that they provided to communities, 
Um, they offer low risk, low cost business startup, and they're about an outlet for local food as well. And I believe that they must be part of local leveling up, devolution and localism agendas. But there's also a green agenda in there whereby markets offer less miles traveled for produce, less packaging, an opportunity to promote shop, shop local, and also a significant opportunity to promote local food. So I would like to leave you with a local discussion. Um, I believe markets can contribute to an inclusive, a community orientated recovery of high streets, town centres and local communities. So my ask is, will your organisation, will you as an individual endorse the NABMA campaign called Markets First? If you are in a position as a local, a local authority, are markets actually included in your local regeneration strategies and policies? If not, please, please revisit your thoughts on this matter. And then if markets are of interest to you and you're looking to help, um, to, sorry, to start up or you need help with your market, then please, please talk to NABMA. What I'd like to do is to leave you with some links um, and some reading material. The first one is about the NABMA membership and the offer, the benefits, the support that we can provide as a national association. The second one is more detail about our survey undertaken last year and some of the headline messages that then lead into the link to the National Markets First campaign, which is now underway and running for the next two years. And then it may also be of interest to you to look at Love Your Local Market, the newsletter. We shared this with colleagues across Europe last year because Love Your Local Market is now worldwide. It's carried out in 25 um, countries across the world each May. And they also um, appreciate what markets can offer in terms of regeneration and the health and day-to-day -day life of communities. So please get in touch with me. I believe that markets can play a huge role in the regeneration of your town centres and high streets. Yes, they have issues and challenges to face, but they also have opportunities to drive change if everybody pulls together. They are part of your history, they're part of our present, and they can very much be part of the future. So thank you very much for the opportunity to present today and listening.